this video, I want to talk about stepping on virtual landmines while you're using or developing in the FileMaker platform. Now, we recently had a bug with a copy of FM Starting Point that managed to make its way through our testing process that a user found. And the bug is pretty interesting. And it has to do with the whole concept of script triggers being set up on layouts to do event-driven work. See, script triggers can be defined on a per object basis. So as you click or interact with objects on a layout, scripts can be activated simply by the user stepping through the layout. Now script triggers can also be activated as layouts are spawned or generated and those are basically layout based script triggers. Now the bug that got us the other day was actually in the invoices section in FM starting point. And what we have are some script triggers that are based on these fields here. And the script trigger basically says that on object enter we test to see if these line items are already locked or not. Now the script trigger was originally applied to just these fields here, but my junior staff during the development of the latest version saw that the script triggers were here, that they weren't applied the fields over here, and they figured that it should be made uniform. Of course, making assumptions and adding script triggers based upon assumptions is really dangerous. Because really, here's what script triggers are. If I'm not a developer of FM Starting Point, or I haven't worked in it lately, and I step and click my way through here, literally you might at any time step on a script trigger and detonate it. Now, that would be good under most situations, but you can accidentally detonate script triggers, and it's just like a minefield that's been set up by some military somewhere. It's in a field, you don't know about it, you walk through there, and you get yourself blown up. It's not good. Now, script triggers are a lot like unexploded landmines that are waiting to go off. Now, they're really a powerful tool, they're really awesome, but you have to learn how to deal with them in a safe manner. And one of the things is, is that we've been kind of harping at FileMaker to develop a script step that allows us to disable script triggers in a solution while a script is activated. And the problem that we actually ran into is that we were running a scripted process and as the scripted process was spinning, the FileMaker script itself that was running inadvertently stepped on a script trigger and detonated it. Now, normally if a user is interacting with the interface, we want this to happen. But frequently, if we're running a script, the running assumption of our script is that other script triggers won't fire. Well, that's not a safe assumption because sometimes it does happen. And so what we did is we had this script that actually would go in here, it would do some checks, and it would confirm certain things before it did a deduction. Well, the problem was is that this script right here, which is 11.16 in FM starting point, would actually inadvertently detonate this script trigger right here, which runs script 11.32. So the question is, is how do you prevent landmines from detonating accidentally? on your FileMaker database and blowing them up. Well, it's really pretty easy to do, but you have to be aware of it. And once again, I really wish FileMaker would give us a script step that would say, disable script triggers when we go to work on our script 1116. We would actually be able to put that script up here at the top so as to not trip anything. But FileMaker hasn't given us that script step yet. And we've been asking for it for a while. So in the meantime, until they actually do something about this, what you have to do is you actually have to program each individual landmine to not detonate by accident. Now, the landmines may be stepped on, but the landmines need to be smart enough to determine is this a time to run or is this a time not to run? And if it runs, of course, then it's going to potentially interrupt things. Now, if you think about this logically, we want these script triggers that are hidden on layouts like landmines to run if a user manually activates them for a vast majority of time. And the vast majority of the time, we don't want these script triggers slash landmines to run if some other script accidentally steps on them. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. What you're going to need to do is you have to actually do two things. You actually have to go to the script trigger itself and when you define the script trigger right here, you're going to actually pass it 
a value right here called get script name. And this is really important. You're going to pass the value script name to the script trigger. That's one thing. The second thing you're going to have to do is actually go to script 11.32 and add a little bit of code to it. And that code is this section right here that I added in to fix the bug in our copy of FM starting point. And what you're doing is you're checking to see if the script parameter that was passed to it is not empty or is full. If the script parameter being passed to you has a value, then we want to exit. Now what does this mean? Well, let me move this over here and let me bring up our script trigger right here and so we can see this. Here's the rub. Get script name at the moment that you run it will capture the name of a script that's running. Okay, very important. However, if the user steps on the script by accident, you know, the landmine has to evaluate the situation. And if the user steps on it, no script is actually running. A user is running, but a script is not running. So this value will be blank or null, as they say in the business. And so what happens is, is that it activates script 1132 and it passes a null value into the script parameter. No value is passed. Then right here, this thing says, well, is a script parameter full of something? Now I use not as empty a lot, but I really hate double negative because is empty is negative and not is a negative. So two negatives together make a positive. And really what we need is is full right here, right? It'd be really great. I say this out loud to myself, is the script parameter passed to me full of something? Well, it wasn't because the user activated it. So then it just continues on and it runs this block of script right here. Pretty straightforward. However, if another script is running, like we press this button right here and we run script 1116, it'll accidentally step on one of these fields as part of the process where it's doing its work. And if 1116 is running and you step on that script trigger, the script trigger will instantly stop 1116 and it will fire. And it will pass to it get script name. At that point, get script name has a value because a script was running at that time. So then we've programmed 1132 to see that something was running and it halts right here. So the landmine evaluates itself and then goes back to sleep. It's like a script trigger that wakes up, it checks the status, oh, it's a good situation, don't run, right? So, you know, if you're going with our landmine analogy, the landmine evaluates who stepped on it and then it doesn't blow up, right? So smart landmines are good. I'm very big on smart things, things that you know evaluate the situation and check and then make appropriate decisions. If it's kind of a dumb script trigger, it would just run automatically regardless, and that's where we had our bug. Now the important subtlety here to understand, at this moment, say I'm on browse mode and I press this button, at the moment I press it, a script is not running yet. And it's also important to understand that the script parameter will be rolled up and evaluated before it's sent to the script. I mean, really, you think about it, that has to be the case because the idea is that your script parameter is something that you calculate, you formulate together, you bundle it up, and then you send it to the script. Make sense? Well, that happens before the beginning of the execution of the script. No script is running. And then, of course, as the script parameter is passed and that script is activated, then, of course, a script is running. But before that, when that script parameter is evaluated, no script is running if the user trips it by hand. The user tripped it, not another script. Now, if another script trips it, then this script trigger is going to roll up the script parameter. It'll evaluate that get function. It'll go, aha, yes, a script is running, and it'll pass that name. In this situation, it doesn't really matter what script is running. Any script is bad. Any script that's running at the time will be interfered with, and we want this script trigger to not interfere with ongoing processes. So this is where we put this little smart detection into our script triggers. But we have to do it in a combination of passing a script parameter and then also an if statement in the script trigger script itself. So hopefully this makes sense. The goal is to have the user step on something and have it fire as opposed to another scripted process in FileMaker stepping on it by accident and having it fire and then having it interfere and cause a problem. So hopefully this video makes sense to you. We've tried to animate it well for you. 
If you have any questions, feel free to check out our video training course at learningfilemaker.com. And I'll see you next time.